going on guys? It's Cliffy here. Welcome back to another episode of International Cricket Captain. Today we are playing through in our New Zealand career mode and we are playing the third and final game of this three match final series of the Tri-Series that I did talk about last time around. This game here is essentially a dead rubber. We have won the first two games. The third game doesn't matter if we lose this. We have already secured this Tri-Series trophy. So because of that we have gone and made uh, quite a few changes. A few players looking at getting, well, just getting some game time. There are a few players that are quite uh, tired and have had a very busy, probably, you know, couple of weeks playing through these games. Remember, we played eight group stage games and then followed it up by a three game final series. So it is a lot of one day cricket that is being put in to, you know, a very short space of time. So because of that, players are obviously going to get tired, they're going to get injured. Um, so Matt Henry, he has been rested for this game, as we can see on here. Trent Bolt back in the side. Uh, Corey Anderson, who's had a really, really good tournament, he has been left out as well. Kane Williamson, he's been given a rest. Ross Taylor's been given the captaincy duties. Ken McClure comes in for Kane. Um, and Mitchell Santner coming in for Corey Anderson. So still giving us that option uh, with the ball. So we still do have those six bowling options, um, which I think really have been key in this series. I'm really surprised with how well uh, the likes of Corey Anderson and even Colin Munro. I'm really surprised at how they have gone in this series. They've been very good, very effective, um, very economical. And when they have been on, Corey Anderson has picked me up a couple of five-wicket bags. Um, Munro's picked me up a couple of three- and four-wicket bags. So they are definitely going and getting the job done, which is just what we want to see. Um, you know, really need those guys to try and stand up for me, and that's what they have done uh, to date so far. So hopefully we can go and I guess carry on our good form because we only lost two games in the group stage only lost once to Pakistan once to Australia um, and it would be nice if we could clean sweep this final series three to nothing it would really just stamp our authority on the one day format in this game uh, which is what we're going to do we're going to have a change of a bowler now we're going to bring in that man Colin Munro who as I said has been very, very good and very effective to me. And uh, one thing that I will say has really helped in this tournament, um, heading into it, Martin Gupta was not in very good form. He wasn't scoring me runs whatsoever. He was actually dropped at one stage, surprisingly. It's very strange, uh, you know, for a Black Caps fan, a New Zealand cricket fan, to say that Gupta... Um, you know, should be dropped or was dropped from the one-day side. He's obviously such a good one-day and T20 player, um, can just change the game massively with his power hitting up the top. Um, so to have him drop, he did come out. BJ Watling came in, um, didn't do much of a better job. So Guptill did come in. And uh, quite vitally, I think in the first game of this three-match final series, he did actually hit me 100. So, um, you know, what better time to get back into form? Not necessarily in a must-win game, but a game that does make it a lot easier if we did win. That may be our first wicket there. It is. The finger goes up. Um, so finally we get the breakthrough. A good opening stand by Pakistan, but they have been going very, very slow. They've only got 102 inside the space of 31 overs. So we're really doing a good job um, of restricting at this stage, and hopefully we can continue to do that. I think Shazad has actually gone and picked himself up a half century. Um, but Santa is starting to find the edge just a little bit. I'm going to keep Colin Munro going. As I said, you wouldn't pick it but he is just a guy that comes in he will bowl you your 10 overs and not go for many whatsoever heading into his last one here he bowled nine gone for 25 and taken that one wicket so for a guy who essentially is a part-timer he has become a complete all-rounder and basically a go-to bowling option in this one-day lineup for me the only issue I do have with Colin Munro is he is getting on in his career now he is 29 so I'm not going to have his services for a whole lot. And that last six off that last ball of a spell has kind of, I wouldn't say has ruined it. It still is a very good spell, don't get me wrong. One for 35 off his 10. But could have been so much better. We're going to go and bring back the big guns now. Um, we're not going to need all of these guys to bowl out their full quota of 10, which is always nice. And that's something um, that has helped me as well because um, quite often players have been getting taken to in this series. Um, you know, when it comes to my bowlers, as we can see, Milne has gone and picked up Shazad's there. Um, but yeah, getting taken to. So it does make a huge difference when we do have the likes of Corey Anderson. We've got Jimmy Nishan. We've got Colin Munro. You know, essentially the... Um, when, when we look at it, essentially between uh, those guys, Mitchell Santner has been playing a few games as well. So technically sometimes we have had six or seven uh, bowling options. 
So it does make it very easy. If one of the main bowlers, if one of Saudi, Bolt, uh, Matt Henry, one of them gets taken to, it is very easy to make up those other overs between uh, the others. And I mean, if they are on form, which they have been in this tournament at some stages, it does make it very easy to get 20 overs out of Munro, uh, Anderson, and Nisham. It is very, very easy. And we don't really lose anything, as we've seen in this game. Munro, very, very good, very effective. Um, as was Mitchell Santner and Corey Anderson and Jimmy Neesham have been the same. They've been chipping in all tournament, which is, you know, more than we can ask for. And it is exactly what we want going forward with this one-day side as well, you know, heading into future tournaments. There's another one. Bolt comes back, grabs a wicket, gets Safaraz for just five. And uh, we'll be looking to go and try and contain... Pakistan here to a relatively low score. I think, you know, the pitch is still very good and I think the bowlers have done an excellent job today uh, to contain the way that we have. But we just need to make sure that we don't let it slip towards the back end, which is kind of what has happened here with Akmal as he's hit two fours in a row. Um, Going to make that three in the over and that is not what we want to see. We want to try and keep it down. It was looking at one stage like Pakistan weren't even going to get close to 200. Um, now they're probably looking like they are going to get well in excess of that, um, and I believe that is a 200 up for them. <clears throat> but things just aren't going our way. This is not what we want to see. I'm going to bring back Jimmy Neesham just to see if we can get something from him because the pace guys just don't seem to be getting the job done, and we just need some dot balls or possibly even some wickets here. And I think James Neesham actually has gone and provided us with one. The dangerous Umar Akmal, who is looking good, it must be said. Um, he's gone for 57 of 47, but the damage may possibly already be done by the Pakistanis. There is still two overs left to go, um, but we have really uh, pulled it back, I was going to say, a little bit until that four there. Um, and Milne does pick up a wicket off his final ball. Um, so I think he finishes with Tufa. He's been pretty good. Uh, did get taken to a little bit in that last over. But um, see, this is what I'm talking about. Our death bowling has been really, really poor. And uh, we can see that. And that's a difference. I mean, like here, this is a difference between like 220 and 240. And that's what's happened. There is no way that in that last over... Um, it has gone for, I'm just trying to work this out, 19. So that is incredible. Pakistan somehow get up to 240, which is absolutely crazy. But hopefully, these two guys, the openers, they have been the big guns. Ken McClure playing today, as I mentioned in the bowling effort. He is playing for Ross Taylor. Uh, sorry, he is playing for Kane Williamson. Ross Taylor has taken over the captaincy duties. Um, and as I said, Guptal has been in good form, so hopefully he can keep that up um, throughout this game. But again, we do have a very long batting lineup with Santner down at eight, uh, and Latham has just failed for me, which is a bit of a bugger. But Ken McClure still averaging 65 in one-day cricket. And I'm going to try and make him uh, be a bit of the anchor in the innings, and Guptal can really try and play uh, around him and try and, again, get some runs, because he's been very good in these uh, this essential final three-game series. Um, between us and Pakistan. And one thing that I do like is McClure's gone very, very early on. Um, but one thing I do like in the makeup of this one day side, especially if you take Santner out and bring in Corey Anderson, Corey Anderson goes to six, Munro to seven, and Nisham down to eight, is that not only do you have a lot of bowling power and good bowling power, you have a lot of hitting power. So if you can get someone, obviously Kane Williamson um, plays for me most of the time, and Ross Taylor, if those can be the guys that go and noodle it around, um, and then, you know, even if you're left with needing um, 120, you know, say off the last 15, 20 overs, you've got Anderson, you've got uh, Munro, and you've got Nisham left to come. So you've got two, uh, uh, sorry, you've got three very, very good players, uh, very aggressive players as well, which I think we're possibly going to need in this situation here because the required run rate has already shot up above five. And we're going to need Guptal and Henry Nichols to play a bit of a knock. Nichols, I don't think, has done much in this tournament. And that is going to continue here as he has gone caught and bowled. And um, all of a sudden, we do have Colin Munro in probably a hell of a lot earlier than we would have liked. There is no way I would have wanted Colin Munro in in the 17th over. Guptal is, I was going to say, is still in and is going well. But we're seeing an absolute monumental collapse here from the Kiwis. As things are just going downhill very, very quick. We're going to need our all-rounders to play a bit of a match-winning role here today. They are going to need to stick around for a long time. They can't... 
I mean, they can still play their natural game here. They can still go out um, and have a hit. They can still go out and be aggressive, but they do just need to pick the ball. They can't go and try and hit everything over the fence. Because, um, I mean, after really these two and Santner don't really have much. Trent Bolt, Tim Southey, and Adam Milne all can bat, um, but, you know, don't really want them to be required to stick around for an extended period of time because otherwise we are going to struggle and I'm going to have to put the aggression up because the run rate is now at six and as I said uh, I would prefer to go and try and blaze it down these guys have had enough time to get themselves in get a bit aggressive um, and try and bring that run rate down and I mean if we can get Santner, uh, Bolt, Southey and even Adam Milne if we can get them I was going to say a chance just to bat out and possibly only need 40 runs off, say, the last 10 overs. Then we can possibly look at going and doing that. But Munro has just dragged one off Yasser Shah. He goes for 15. It really is down now to Santner and Nisham. As I said, this isn't a must-win game for us, but we do definitely want to go and try and pick up the victory because, you know, it's international cricket. You don't want to lose games. Santner has gone and edged that one. And uh, it has actually landed safe. It's gone for four. So a bit of luck there for Slinky Santler. And hopefully he can carry that on uh, in the back end of his innings. Because things aren't looking too great at the moment. And Santler, this is a big chance for him. This is a big chance for him uh, possibly to try and nab a place. Not only in the starting 11, but possibly in that top seven of the batting lineup. He hasn't really been used as much as Anderson, Nisham, and Munro in the innings. I just, uh, I don't know. The pitches that we're playing on, I think we're playing in Australia, just haven't really suited spin bowling as much as they have pace bowling. So that's why we've gone pretty much with a, a all pace attack most of the time. But this is a good chance for Santner to prove himself with the ball, especially heading forward into future events. So, um, you know, we've got a World Cup. I, I want to say just around the corner, but it's not just around the corner. We've got a World Cup that is coming up. It's not far away. Um, <clears throat> but all of a sudden, this is where this is the situation I wouldn't mind being in, needing 107 off the last 15, if we did have a few more wickets left in hand. If we still had Munro to come, if we still had Nisham to come, uh, and Satna, if we still had one of those top five in, uh, from Guptal, Latham, uh, McClure today, Taylor and Nichols. If we still had one of those guys in, I would be a hell of a lot more comfortable chasing this. But saying that, it is still on. We just need to make sure that we don't lose a wicket um, and continue, I guess, with this aggressiveness because, you know, we need to be careful. We obviously don't want to lose a wicket because we do require seven runs and over. But after this, we don't really have too much in regards to batting. So, um, Hopefully these two can go and get the job done. They've got a new user record for a partnership. I'm guessing that's for the sixth wicket. Um, so that, you know, that's good. We'll definitely take that. And um, it is and it is going to be interesting to see how the Pakistanis go. One thing I have noticed in this game and in this tournament is that teams are very reluctant to use more than five bowlers. They'll just have their stock standard five and they will bowl them out regardless of how they are going. So hopefully with that being said, um, in these last 10 overs or so, we can really try and target one of them uh, and take them for a big over, which is going to help us immensely. Yes, Shah has been good today. Um, I think Yemen has been good as well. I think he picked up three very early on. And Santner has somehow dissected the offside there and picked himself up four. But there's another one down the ground. So this possibly is that over uh, that we were talking about, that one that we were going to go and target uh, one of the Pakistani bowlers. But please not a run out. I believe it is just a 50 for Santner. So coming off 42 deliveries, I think that might even possibly be his highest one-day score. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that should be 50 not out beside there, but um, that's all right. So he's 50 not out. Nisham is 56 off 67. Um, and the run rate for the first time in a while has dropped down below a run of ball. We need 55 off the last 10, which I'm not too concerned about. And this guy, Hamza, um, still has a few overs left to bowl. And we've been aggressive against him last over, so hopefully we can do the same here. And hopefully we can pick up some boundaries because, oh, Santa, you haven't done it. Oh, no, he's gone for 51. It is a new high score for him. But really not what we needed at this stage. We really needed him to stick around um, just to try and get something going. So hopefully Trent Bolt, um, for some reason Trent Bolt or another, just seems to have a canny knack, I was going to say, of scoring runs. But not today. He is gone. And uh, we do now only have the two wickets left in hand. We're going to need Nisham essentially uh, to win this game by himself. So he's going to look to try and farm the strike. 
uh, and try and pick up basically as many boundaries as we can get. But if Milne can do his bit, and if he can nudge it around, only 35 off the last five, so it's not impossible. Only seven runs and over. That is a couple of boundaries. All we need Milne to do is basically get on strike, get off strike, but this could be game over here as Nisham has gone and edged one away. He's gone for 77, a good knock nonetheless, um, but has gone, and with that you would say probably New Zealand's hopes of securing the 3-0 whitewash in this final series. As uh, Sa I was going to say, sally has gone for a duck, um, but I believe that did fall just short. No mistake this time. Pakistan get that. Mohammed Rizdin with the catch. They win by 32 runs. And as we can see, they win this by 32. But at the end of the day, New Zealand... Oh, sorry, we lost three games. I thought we only lost two. Um, but New Zealand won by nine wickets, six wickets. And then Pakistan won by 32. So we have won this one-day series, this tri-series. Um, which has been quite long. It's been quite strenuous, but we are now done and dusted with it. We've got one more series left in this year, and that is, I believe, South Africa coming to town, um, which should be uh, quite good. We've got two tests, three one-day internationals, and two 2020 internationals. So that should be a lot of fun. Do hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Until next time, this is Cliffy, your King of Career Mode, and New Zealand's number one source of international cricket captain content, signing out.